Welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, a show about weirdos, with your hosts, John Fahey, Aaron Peter, and Matt Brutzone. Hello folks, welcome to Profiles in Eccentricity, it's a show about weirdos, doggone it. My name is John Boy. It is John Boy time. I am your host, John Fahey. Joining me as ever, the pervert persevering, Aaron Joseph Peter. I'm not a pervert. I'm just Italian. <laughs> <laughs> or Spanish. Which or is fine these days. Fine. It's mm-hmm. fine. Uh, How you doing? W- were you say- <laughs> did you say... I'm doing well. Thank you. Did you say um, per- the pervert persevering? Yes. Is that like a, a vision? WandaVision reference? Uh, no, no. It's just what is Aaron if not enduring. pervert persevering? Persever- Persever- yeah, yeah persevering. Yeah. Perv severe. Perversion enduring. Uh, uh, if only they could see your shorts right now. And to your right, my short. left, handsome Matt Brousseau, the Hi. Frenchman henchman. Hello. Hi there. Great to be here. You like Good that shit? Do you think people want to see my shorts? No. Oh, got it. Yeah. It's uh it's a sh- it set us back. <laughs> ah, shit, there goes the flag. You fucked it up. The flag, the short says the responsible. Well, it's got to fly at half mass now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, I uh, I want to um get into uh, this is a listener based episode, man. Aren't they all? This is this one is uh, uh you know two things I got from listeners. One of them is Dodger, which is fine. You know, Dodger is like you know fucking he'll. You know, Todd just sends me a screenshot of what he gets charged by Patreon. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, dude, give me more, man. Give me some more. Uh, before you jump into it. Uh, no, hold on. I'm going to get there. Okay. I was going to say the other, the other thing I got up front is from a new listener. But while we're talking about listeners, uh, we want to do one more call for Aaron's tattoo. Michelangelo's David Duchovny. Mm-hmm. Right now, James Dillenbeck is in the lead. Yeah. A wonderful line drawing mm-hmm. of the Michelangelo statue of David with the David Duchovny face. Mm-hmm. Um, Dark Rose Dallas sent one. We've pretty got, good. Gotten a lot. Uh, if you've got, uh, ha- you got like hardcore realism, I'll take that too. Yeah, whatever, man. I mean, you know, just uh, if you if you have you know any inclination to be. The designer of Aaron's first tattoo. I mean, that would be great. Yeah. You could even throw out ideas of where to get it. I mean, yeah. where on my person. Yes, sure. <laughs> yeah. That'd be nice. So, uh, guys, let's let's go. <laughs> no, that's, that's how you're saying? Oh, yeah. Give me your shit? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Give yeah. me more. Uh, hey, guys, if you feel like... Uh, you know, yeah. Do you uh, want to have a hand in what gets permanently... Marked on my body, I mean that's like once in a lifetime. Well, yeah, they could just shoot you, I guess. Please don't. Yeah, yeah, the tattoo's a way better idea. Tattoo's better. Yeah, than death. So uh, or serious injury. Maim, maim, maim. This uh, listener messaged me um, with this, <laughs> which is pour out the piss. <laughs> I'm ready to chug. Oh God, that's shit. great. Which I immediately in my head was the song pour. Out the piss. I'm ready to jump. <laughs> oh, that song. Yeah, yeah. Put yeah. me in, coach. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I just went there right away. Well, I mean, pour some. I thought it was a song. It was. Uh, it was a song about um, <laughs> airlines. Mm. Put me in, coach. <laughs> play, I'm ready play to what? Play. play what? I don't want to pay <laughs> today. Look at uh, me. I can be Santa C. Yeah, there's God, so this uh, this this uh, in the aisle. This this listener said, um, a small local news story got me thinking about the Tiki uh, Adult Theater, and I thought it might tickle you too. This news report is eight years old now, but it's it's a sweeping report about a CD restaurant having sex parties after hours, oh. and uh, the punters having sex outside and in the alley behind the restaurant. And it's a known local hangout of local hoods. Now, uh, punter? punters, so English. Yes, punters. it's uh, it, it's a uh, Catford uh, <laughs> punters, Catford area of London. Mm. Um, they're called punters. Yeah, anybody paying for anything with is you know it's like a you're paying with the pound. You're you're a punter. Got it. Yeah, you uh, pay with the pound, don't you? You pay by the pound. Uh-huh. Uh, pound for pound. <laughs> 
Not for pound to pound. So this is this is great because you know this just goes into like a bunch of the, like this is like this place is so fucking sketchy, but it's it, it's also like the kind of like vitriol of, of the article is, is so funny because it's just like they're scandalized. You know what I mean? What kind of restaurant was it? Scandalized. A French restaurant, La Bourgeois. La- <laughs> Typical. Right? La Bourgeois. Catford French restaurant, La Bourgeois, faces closure over sex in the basement. <laughs> and I like it. <laughs> Ooh la la. A Catford French restaurant could lose its license over allegations of sex in the basement, fighting, drug use, and people defecating outside. Well, if they're fighting <laughs> in the basement, someone's going to defecate, I'll tell you that. Neighbors claim they've been getting an Eiffel. Eiffel Tower spell. They've been getting an Eiffel. No. Of seedy goings on at Le Bourgeois, situated oh, me oh, to oh. Eros House block of flats on Brown Hill Road. Brown Hill reports well, from it was the- a Brown Hill because they were defecating outside. <laughs> they right. rolls down yeah. mm-hmm. hill. Reports from the Met Police calling for the license to be revoked are being considered at Catford Town Hall this week and detail a range of allegations. They include complaints that customers have been romping in the basement, watching strip teasers in the early hours, and during a summer pool party, having sex in the block stairwell. Nice. Police say they also found numerous business cards for a weekly, le- weekly late night adult party called Thick Lick. <laughs> 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 Believed to be linked to the venue. Adver- oh, it better be. Advertised delights on offer include male and female performers, exotic dancers, private rooms, and a birthday special. And yes. a whole outback in which to shit. <laughs> Is that the thick lick, I guess, the birthday special, huh? Neighbors uh-huh. have also reported a gun being fired, fighting by customers, cannabis smoking, gambling, pools of urine, and used condoms strewed outside by boozing punters. <laughs> Lewis M. East MP, MP Heidi Alexander said she was first contacted about the problems nine months While ago. While she was there. <laughs> she, she said, quote, people talked about having to clean up feces from outside the restaurant. They told me there are strippers inside and there are people having sex at the back of the restaurant. Why are they shitting outside? Because <laughs> it's, it's the best, This is a fucking party, dude. Because fuck it, dude. This is a party. Dude, fuck it. I mean, listen, puddles of piss, okay. I guess. But... The shit is weird. Take a shit in the, you're at a place that has toilets. How about a dumpster? Anything. Uh, well, what? come on. What, are you going to climb, you gotta climb you don't in the dumpster? Like, you don't want like a hot shit smell fucking up your strip tease party. Dude, well, I, that's yeah. why you, pill, you shit outside. Oh, dude, that shit. No, but they're rock. fucking in the stairwell, too. Oh, but that's different. Okay. That's well, not a strip tease party. No, the strip tease is inside. Spit man in the stairwell. There are people having sex at the back of the restaurant, she said. Given the length of time that these problems have been going on, I do think some serious action needs to be taken. <laughs> the license will be reviewed. Number one, <laughs> inviting me. <laughs> yeah. The license will be reviewed at a Lewisham Council Licensing Committee on Thursday. <sighs> Neighbors claim the restaurant is driving them crazy. And re- <laughs> I'm so horny all the time. <laughs> Their food's so good. <laughs> <laughs> and have revealed the problems in a series of anonymous statements to police. Quote, it is having a detrimental effect on my physical and mental well-being and oh. has gotten to the stage <laughs> where I have to leave my flat on weekends. Just a shit. And look for where I can go to in order that I can have a peaceful weekend. <laughs> I'm so horny <laughs> all the time. What with the smell of shit <laughs> and the sounds of <laughs> fucking going on? Oh. How can a man sleep? <laughs> Was it like the uh, houses of the, the rich and famous? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Lifestyles. <laughs> <laughs> Alleys of the rich and famous. Here's a Condom. Why are they using How that? did they get so much shit in there? <laughs> on several occasions, I saw a finger and hands printed on places on the bonnet of my car in a compromising position. Oh, oh so they did yeah. some detective work. They're doing some fucking on my work. Oh, my God. Uh, my, well, my car. What am I saying? Uh, my uh, bonnet. There were lots of strange people wandering the building, it's usually very drunk, bonnet. stinking of alcohol, and or carrying bottles, cans of strong alcohol. Another resident. I have been informed by a co-resident that sex activities are going on in the basement. She found used condoms constantly in the basement after parties at La Bourgeois. They were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Another resident. The noise, fighting, gangs hanging around, drug dealing, shouting and screaming, all from this club is getting to my wit's end. Fantastic. Isn't that nice? Now... I, I like the second lady, though. She's dude, like, do I, they have a, do they have a Yelp up? Uh, page i know it's eight years old but uh i mean we can, I, I don't know maybe after the break we can check yeah, out the yeah, yelp yeah. for the for the, the the la bourgeois so i guess this is from like the 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 police the police 
uh, you know, uh, came around and, and called for, you know, the guy. And so this is their report. During the court licensing, the, the, uh, during the overt licensing visit, uh, the Co- per- covert, covert, maybe. Yeah, it says overt. <laughs> um, the person's, uh, the person officers were speaking to give, gave his name as Bremen Ak- Akanmu, who is listed as the designated premises supervisor. This was the name that was signed on the section 19 closure notice that was issued at the time. Some digital photos were taken as record as t- at the time of the visit, one of which contains the image of the person spoken to who signed the notice. On the 3rd September 2012 at 1600 hours, Mr. Sidel Cease attended Capitol Police Station and wanted to speak to licensing officers. I attended the front office and in company of Inspector Dave Brighouse, I spoke with Mr. Cease in an interview room. From the outset of the conversation, Mr. Cease was apparently aggravated and aggrieved that the visit had taken place and mentioned that there were at least 12 officers performing the visit. He blamed the performing. Other- he blamed, blamed the others for the mess outside the premises, stating that they buy alcohol from the off-license across the road and leave all the mess specifically outside his bar. When asked how he knew of the visit, he stated that his manager had told him and that he will ensure the, ma- the managers will sort things out. I told him that I had photo of the person spoken to at the time of the visit. Mr. Cease then admitted that he was present during the visit <laughs> and was the one officers had spoken to. I asked whether he had shown out to other officers as the owner and why he had signed the notice as Brigham Akonmu. He stated that he was also Brahima Akonmu and he had signed the notice, a copy of the notebook for scrutiny purposes. He went on to then say that he and Brahima Akonmu were half brothers with the same mother, but different fathers. We eventually discussed the previous slicing visit in some detail. Mr. C stated that the reason <laughs> the premises were open was that they were holding a birthday party for him. They're balloons. The birthday special. Or a party. Now, look, officer. I, <laughs> look at all these used liquid-filled <laughs> balloons on the ground. I, I wasn't even there. Uh, well, I was there. But I'm not him. But I'm I his w- half-brother. So I was only half there. <laughs> we look the same, but we have different parents. I mean, there's no way I could get all this shit inside a condom. <laughs> we eventually... We eventually <laughs> discussed the previous slicing visit in some detail. Mr. C stated that the reason... Uh, he admitted that his date of birth was 17th of May, 1975, and that the delay was due to Ramadan. Well, it, it, well, it, it comes up at the most random time. He went on it to really talk about wanting to be able to serve food and have music until uh, 0500 hours. I advised him that he would put in for a variation of his conditions and not just take it upon himself to open as he saw fit. Following the visit on the 5th of September, further inquiries were made with Brahima Akanmu on his mobile number. On speaking to him, he stated that he had left the premises over a year ago and, nothing, and had nothing to do with the bar any longer. The, photo that, uh, the photograph of a commune that appears on his perf- personal license was obtained from Greenwich Borough Council, and it is clear that it is not the person in the photo that was taken on the night of the licensing visit. Small plastic bags on the floor used for containing cannabis, also seen Rizla packets and broken cigarettes. The drugs litter appeared to be mainly outside Le Bourgeois. The whole area s- smelled strongly of urine, and empty bottles of alcohol such as Guinness and Stella Whoa. were scattered Whoa. around the immediate I mean, area. These, guys, these are classic folks. Yeah, these are European beers. So, yeah, they uh, the the guy who, who who writes the first article, um, Mark Chandler, um, five stars, loved it. He he really goes in after this place because you know it's it's a story to sell, um, but yeah, he uh, <laughs> he's got another one called "Pray for It to Close: New Cross Filth or Sex and Attracting Prostitutes." That's fine. And so eventually he goes, right? Which is what you got to do. We did it, you know. Oh, the, the teak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We yeah. did it with the You got it. Well, you got to go. You're, he's writing this whole article asking. Yeah. <laughs> one, of, one of the people he interviewed said, I heard from somebody there was a bunch of condoms down there. Well, yeah, well there's one way to find out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> go leave some. There, this, this, is all from, <laughs> this is all from the amazing periodical called The News Shopper. Shopper. Well, you get it at the supermarket, I yeah, imagine. Yeah, it's some garbage. Yeah, it's a it's <laughs> Bat <laughs> Boy was there. 10th of February, 2015. Pornhub. News shopper visits secret new cross X-rated cinema where s- customers have sex in the aisles. Hmm. Wow, this guy's finding all the good places. Our story about the porn cinema in New Cross has generated many thousands of views. Read all about it and have your say about this seedy establishment. Well, it's not seedy till after the show's over. Mm. In an old printing shop near New Cross Station, people are gathering to watch hardcore pornography and romp in the aisles to X-ray images. 
The club is now being billed online as London's last remaining sex cinema and is attracting growing crowds thanks to word being spread on swingers forums. And this very periodical <laughs> <Yeah>. website. <laughs> exactly. Read our article about Thanks it. to all these <laughs> uh, swingers boards and us. You people are sick. Last month, Lewis and Council denied any knowledge of the venue, but news shop I paid a visit this week and found the party in full swing. <laughs> Bet they We've only brought four or five or 16 <laughs> people. <laughs> keen journalists. Real keen. <laughs> <laughs> pants on, pants off. <laughs> we did a deep dive into this story. <laughs> it gives a new meaning to embedded journalism. <laughs> <laughs> the porn wasn't the only thing that was gonzo. <laughs> <laughs> Once inside, a sign telling partners to push hard on the front door seems to have been pe- taken down. We were greeted by a friendly bearded man who charged us 15 quid <laughs> and then waved us through. I'm like, can you believe that? <laughs> on arrival, he said, quote, urinals are just through there. Everything else is downstairs. So there's only urinals. That's why you got to shit outside. That makes sense. Walking past a note is telling customers cleanliness is next to godliness. And we this just, is Satan's we hole. We just send it into pitch black with the faint sound of groaning coming from nearby. Following a green illuminated cable along the floor, we came to the main cinema. Three, four seat rows facing a screen showing glossy hardcore porn. Yeah. In glossy. full HD. <laughs> in the HD. Fr- in the front row sat a Phil, a Phil Mitchell lookalike. Who the fuck is, <laughs> who the fuck is Phil Mitchell? <laughs> oh, no. Can we, if somebody bring up Phil Mitchell... <laughs> I need to know what the fuck Phil Mitchell looks like. He's my mate. Huh. Phil Mitchell. <laughs> you don't know him, but trust me. This <laughs> bloke looks look just, just like him. <laughs> I'm telling you. I was just spin. <laughs> By God, that is Phil Mitchell. <laughs> I take it back. <laughs> Phil, Phil, how are you? <laughs> Phil Mitchell. Good to see you, You're mate. You're live on the newspaper. <laughs> I didn't know you were gonzo too, mate. <laughs> I thought you were gonzo, but not gonzo. <laughs> I mean, I knew you were gonzo, <laughs> Phil but Mitchell, not like this. Phil Mitchell's a character from East Enders. Oh, hell yeah. And, uh, Which is a long-running, uh, okay, yeah, he's mm. white-haired, you know, serious-looking bloke. Uh, but uh, but EastEnders is a long-running. It's Coronation Street and EastEnders, I think, like, the two long-running, br- like, primetime British soaps. Mm-hmm. Um, in the front row sat a Phil Mitchell lookalike with, an aggr- with a grunt to match. <laughs> oh, Trousers, trousers around his ankles with a kneeling woman in red lingerie performing a sex act upon him. Stan- oh, standing that's around- an EastEnder. Mm. Standing here, this get- journalist nearly <laughs> popped his top. <laughs> he was getting a bend over Eastender. <laughs> Standing around by the door and sitting on the red seats were a group of middle aged, sheepish looking men. Cucks the lot. <laughs> That's not in it. <laughs> <laughs> From the smell of it, she had a wicked yeast. <laughs> From now on, I'm going to be throwing stuff in and not saying what's real. <laughs> Red seats were a group of middle-aged, sheep, sheepish-looking men, cocks the lot, pleasuring themselves as they watched. Only one customer seemed to be paying no attention, daft cunt, reaching into a black rucksack and pulling out a can of Foster's. <laughs> Australian for, for beer. beer. <laughs> After a while, Phil looked across at us and uttered a charming phrase. Ugh. If anyone wants to have a go on it, be my guest. <laughs> Thanks, Phil. The condoms are just there. <laughs> That's it, and they're just there. <laughs> for looks. <laughs> He pointed to the selection of Johnny's, which had been placed precariously on the woman's back. There was silence. Oh, the, the rubbers were just yeah, hanging out sitting on, on her back. Hopefully, she was in a <laughs> table formation. <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> beautiful theater. There was silence for a while before one excitable fellow standing next to me obliged, dropping trow and kneeling down on the ground to join in with the rest looked on. Plus, he fought. <laughs> <laughs> After a while, the woman, who appeared to be Big Phil's girlfriend, asked for a break. <laughs> you are wearing a condom, aren't you, Phil asked, suddenly appearing concerned. Yeah, the sure. Thir- the third man pointed out the evidence and left the room to do up his trousers with a sigh of satisfaction. At this point, having accidentally caught the eye of a very enthusiastic viewer, a new shopper left the main room, walking past a man checking his texts in two small dark alcoves where men sat alone playing with themselves while watching the film on small private TVs. Wow, that's nice. Back in the outside world, school children skipped down the street. No. Builders worked on sites next door. Customers popped into the neighboring addresses and cars sat waiting in a traffic jam, all seemingly oblivious. 
to their filthy depravativity. <laughs> or, or just waiting their turn. Children hopscotching around the piles of feces. <laughs> Double dutching around the turds. <laughs> and people are like, and they paid you. <laughs> so in the comments, then it's great. Because they go, and they paid you how much for this advertisement? You know? Oh, yeah. you went there. And they're like, uh, so, uh, let's go. Uh, <laughs> I uh-huh. mean, this place had everything. <laughs> Blind guys doing poppers in the <laughs> alcove. One Shit guy, on the floor. One guy goes, what bus goes from Bromley to New Cross again? Erwin <laughs> <laughs> says, seedy and exciting, like being in the 1970s in Soho. <laughs> Mbox 2 says, fine, do we know any harm? All behind closed doors between consenting adults. Live and let live, mate. Jesus. <laughs> Mbox 2 is there. <laughs> well, Lawman 2004 says all we get in our dying town center is pound shops and coffee houses. <laughs> well, what are pound shops? Where everything costs a pound. I don't a know. A dollar store. I, yeah. I don't know, John. <laughs> Sounds like there's a real Sunny, pound shop. S- Sonny Jim says Phil's bird sounds like a keeper. <laughs> 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 uh, this is. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's, so, it's so funny. Uh, Le- legal theater. Uh, oh, like legal porno? Yeah. Oh, God. Oh. Well, I guess we got to take this show international. Oh, one of them said, Ha, huh, how many of the new shopper journalists had to go in there and see it for themselves? And how many of them are still in there? Nice work if you can get it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, blow me down. Thanks for the tip off. We'll check it out and let you know if I get lucky. <laughs> That's really great. Oh, God. I think we're due for another uh, teak visit. Yeah. You sound so excited. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would go. I would go. I, I think I think we should go with a bigger crew. Yeah. Really do a you know full yeah. teak takeover. Yeah. Wear the shirts. It's a teak over. <sighs> I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Should we all wear the teak shirt? Oh, yeah. Like, like wear like a tourist group? Yeah. <laughs> excuse me, excuse me. Is this, uh, this is teak? We are from Europe. <laughs> Hello. We are the Hollywood bus tour. <laughs> <laughs> we have told the poppers here. Uh, yeah, we're good. We're good. Uh, um, <laughs> no rush. <laughs> no Russians. Um... This is uh this is a this is a real this is a real real fun time. Uh <laughs> Ladsnet username Lads with a Z net. Nice dude. Thanks for the info, Mark. Just a few questions. Do they supply lube? How comfy were the seats? And what would you give the films in terms of marks out of ten? <laughs> it certainly sounds like we're New Cross needs, given the propensity for pound shops, chicken cottages, and boarded up abandoned old buildings. <laughs> However, I'm a bit tired by watching this woman have sex in a public place without asking her permission first. You may have broken the 2003 Sexual Offenses Act on voyeurism, which carries a penalty of up to two years. Is he calling out <laughs> the <laughs> journalist? <laughs> that's, a, that's a great... If you do end up popping a prison, I do hope your newspaper finds someone to cover any similar establishments that open in the area. I don't mind if I throw my own name in the hat. <laughs> I do hope your newspaper finds someone to cover any of the similar establishments that open in the area, as I, for one, appreciate your advert. Without it, I would have never known it existed, (laughs) and I would definitely have missed out. I'm there right now. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. Um, It's really stupid. It's really, really funny. A lot of people saying consenting adults, leave them alone. Um... I think I think well, that seems the, the, uh, yeah, it's very un-American of them to uh, say that. A folk bomb no block says, "Oh yeah, the lady in red, red lingerie. I saw her there. <laughs> she had a face like Scarlett Johansson and a body like Kelly Brook. Lovely girl, very bubbly, if I remember correctly." <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Such a specific. I, mean, I met like, her briefly. I remember her all right. <laughs> she had the business, mate. The full box. <laughs> Marvel superhero. God damn it! It's fantastic. <laughs> she had a face like Margaret Thatcher <laughs> and a body like Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was Margaret Thatcher. <laughs> she had a face like Margaret Thatcher and a body like John Major. <laughs> <laughs> and 
a sordid history like both of them. <laughs> <laughs> and a history of war crimes longer than the two put together. <laughs> <laughs> Is that really nice? I mean, she re- she appeased me like Neville Chamberlain did to the Nazis. <laughs> so this was said from a serious adult, uh, which is, I, I guess, like a, a, a zine um, they do online with cartoons and stuff. Uh, www.seriousadult.com. They sent us this. Uh, I didn't get a name of an actual person I was talking to. Oh, a zine set. That's great. Yeah, it's a serious adult on uh, Instagram. Uh, but uh, seriousadult.com is, is easier to uh, to remember, so just keep that in mind. Check them out. Thank you, Serious Adult. Uh, that's also, a, that's like I, I, so I didn't see this, this question from them about a previous episode. Uh, he said, Hi, guys. I just started listening to the podcast. I love it. I have a quick question I hope you can answer. In the Ruggiero Diodato and Roger Watkins episode, you say there is a controversial theory that some people attribute to the decrease in crime in the 90s, but I can't hear the phrase you used to des- describe it. Is it rear view wind or rear view lead? That was Roe v. Wade. Yeah. <laughs> Roe v. Wade. Yeah, Roe uh, known colloquially Wade. as rear view wind. I, yeah. uh, I mean, it's, it is a rear view wind if you yeah, think yeah. about it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, oh, it, this person is likely uh, not a, British. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they're from yeah. they're from this area where you know this. They, they're a, the, they're, they're a, from okay. Yeah. They're new, a theater, cross a, a theater owner, yeah. a New Cross. Yeah. And, Roe uh, versus Wade, landmark decision. Uh, he said he used to skate near that, or he or she, or well, or you, gotta, you gotta be careful skating. There's all there's, the turd obstacles. Well, that, that's is that a, that's a different spot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh well. Keep it in the family. Who knows? I guess. There's probably turds all over that place. Yeah. <laughs> turds everywhere. <laughs> and they had condoms around them. Can you believe that? <laughs> and I liked it. Hey, you think slipping on a banana <laughs> peel's rough? It's <laughs> like <laughs> taking your skateboard over a condom full of shit. Well, what is a banana? But basically, nature's condom what is full a banana? of shit. <laughs> What, a, uh, what, what is a banana? What, do, what, a, a, what Johnny, is a banana? A Johnny full of shite. If not, if not uh, a Johnny if not a, full of shite <laughs> persevering. <laughs> Vision, I think your programming's <laughs> fucked up. Uh, what is a banana, Wanda? If not uh, a condiment uh, full of a, shit. What is a what banana? What did you say, dude? <laughs> I'm talking about love. <laughs> my my, my brother's dead. <laughs> yeah, but a banana though. <laughs> Have you even seen these? <laughs> what is this? A condom full of shit? <laughs> That's what he knows before he ever sees a banana. It's a very, <laughs> yeah, he's very ripe, that. ripe banana. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! <laughs> wow. How did this get in there? <laughs> Must have taken forever. Huh. <laughs> I'm kind of a miracle worker myself. Vision, I guess we can make banana bread out of it. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody pinched the loaf for sure. <laughs> when Loft gives you a condom full of shit, make banana bread, mate. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick little break, and then we'll come back and uh, we'll do uh, we'll do some uh, some a, l- a little uh, profile for Dodger. Oh, that's son of a. Be right back, folks. And we're back. Hi. Um, there's no Yelp. There's no Yelp. Yeah, we look. We look, you guys. Uh, but that was do they, really, ha- they. Do they not have? Maybe they don't have. Maybe they have Yelp. The Yelp is worldwide. Okay. Hey man, I don't know this stuff. Uh, serious adult. I did ask uh, what the person talked to me, what their name was, but they didn't get back to me. So I, I apologize for that. Well, they're a serious adult, Jen. They have things to do. Yes, it's three in the morning over there. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I guess. In Adultsburg. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want. Um, so, Adultheim. I don't know if you have any things like this. Um, where like, y- uh, so much shit. Uh, <laughs> but I get like giddy about like. There's certain things that like, I don't know, man. It just. It, it, I, I guess it appeals to me in like a comic booky way or something. Uh, but. One of the things I love uh, so much is prison escapes. Yeah. Oh, uh, of course. I love getting one over on them. It's just like there's something about it where it's just like you know prison. Um, you know my dad. My dad also raised me to be like, listen, think about a year in prison. Oh, me too. That's like, how he raised you. He just it was like he's like you know it, there was you, just, 
this thing about like you know and he's give- like then he was like my body's a prison <laughs> <laughs> think about that yeah he's like I, I'm, a, I'm a woman dude <laughs> exactly uh, think about now think yeah. about that. think about that <laughs> Uh, <laughs> year after year, <laughs> life sentence. <laughs> so this came up a lot when you were a kid. Your dad was like, "Oh, you think you got it tough? No, no. Imagine just, a year you know, in prison. No, just in, in, in when we were talking Don't about cr- criminal justice and things like sure, that. Okay, it would be like you know, it became you know the in vogue thing to be like, oh, I'm, I'm a tough judge, and I, I give, oh yeah, tough I, on crime, I no give, nonsense. I, no, give, I mean, I, we we still have that now. Tom Cotton, a U.S. senator, is saying. We're not locking up enough people. Yeah, today, and, and even though clearly it's a it's a travesty the yes, amount of people and, we lock and, up and, and what we do. Yeah, to them. The, and the only illegal slavery, right? Um, yes, mm-hmm. but um, you know, so it's just one of those things where there's so much effort put into keeping you in like a nightmare that if you get around it, there's just a part of me that can't help like really, really cheer. Yeah, um, yeah. It almost it almost doesn't matter what you did. Kind of like even if you right. get out, of, even you when get out of prison, if you escape prison, all right, man. Yeah. It's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, like you know, even like, like Bundy did it like two or three times, and like <laughs> we got out of jail. No, you got out of a courthouse once, and right. then he 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 did. Uh, he got yeah, you got out of a jail another time. Okay, L- a little bit different. L- I don't know if for people. I think everybody understands that. I don't know. Yes, um, but still, a, a building committed to keeping not, you not getting it. you out of it. Yeah. Um, right. So, you know, uh, and then, you know, with, with uh, you know, all my just in the IRA stuff, you know, when you're an IRA volunteer, you are, um, you are tasked with getting out. Like, it's your job to get out. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's a point of pride in the organization. Uh, it, you know, you're, you're at war. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, if you're in, do you, do you are, it's your job to get out, you know? Well, you're in Get Out. So, That's what it does, John. So, like, you know, at first, you know, when the war started in the 70s again, um, they had like these political prisoner camps. I think I told you. Then they, Margaret Thatcher came in and tried to uh, be like, oh no, all crime is crime. And so then they had the prisoner uh, uniform protest, which was the the naked protest. And how she found the time when she's out there in the bo- the bottom oh, of the bourgeois, gosh. chief and dong. Oh. Yeah, I mean she really. You got to give it up to the old Thatch Natch. Yeah, you do. <laughs> you got to give it up. And so the then old- you know it escalated to the dirty protest, which is when you like throw your shit on the walls or whatever, which is out out. Normally back. it goes outside. <laughs> yeah, it's going to in yeah. the old Thatch Natch house. It goes on the wall. And They're then- making a thousand bananas. A day, and, day. and then it escalated to the hunger strikes, right? Where ten men died, and in the meantime, they which found, is in just yeah, and starving, guys, starving yourself to death. I mean, Jesus, like and protest. It's it's, it's incredible. Yeah. Seventy eight days, some of these guys lasted. Jesus. Um, and they would put a hot meal at your your, every your day, bed yeah. every day. Um, probably had a fan blowing there, and the- and so uh, and guys are going blind while talking to each other and shit. Like, I mean, it's your your body eats itself. It's yeah. it's, it's a nightmare. Yeah. But so, in the meantime, you know, everybody's uh, sympathized. So then they're like, oh, fuck, we've, we've, we've increased, like, the IRA roster by, th- like, thousands um, by trying to vilify them. Weird. And um, how that worked. So then, they got, so then they got their, you know, their privileges back, which is wearing your own clothes, family visits, stuff like that. And so immediately, all these, like, fucking, like, hardcore guys in the Maze Prison, which the Maze Prison was built um, by Long Cash, which is the one that had, like, the outdoor camps that these guys would be trying to tunnel out of where they could, uh, at the outset of the war, wear their own clothes and stuff. Do they have any problem tunneling? <laughs> no, 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 no. no, no. <laughs> and they, uh, they, they actually found tunnels out of the maze later and stuff. But the maze was like a state-of-the-art electronic gate, you know, 18-foot-high walls with barbed wire over the top. And then, you know, How do you and, spell it? The maze? Yeah. M A Z E. Oh, so it's not like maze, like a name, like M A Y E S. No, no, no. It was, it was it's like called the maze. Man. It was like here's, here's your scary new prison. It's and, like, and when it opened, it was like the first IRA guy in there. They were like, "Here's your uniform," and he was like, "You're gonna have to nail that to my back. I'm not wearing that." And, uh, and they did. <laughs> but um, so you know, uh, they get their rights back. You know, in uh, political, you know, prisoner rights, basically. And um, in 1983. They had a 35 IRA gang escape, and like it was just it was 35 it was, dudes. 35 dudes got out. It's the biggest prison escape in British history. It's the most, I think, it's the most people that escaped a prison since World War II on the continent. Wow, what year were you born? 
83. Hmm, uh, nice one. And, uh, <laughs> but they, they did it by uh, all these guys would have in, in their visitor. Uh, Those aren't the only times, Irishmen that escaped. They would have uh, their partners uh, bring in saran wrapped gun parts in their vaginas. Mm-hmm. And, then oh. they, and then they assembled like six, you know, guns out of parts. Um, and then, like, they were, like, That's just got near really the orderlies, like, or, or they were orderlies, working as orderlies, and they got near the guards, and then, like, somebody called, uh, they said, like, bumper, bumper, and that was, like, that was the cue for, like, fucking put a gun to him. So then they take all their uniforms, they got them tied up, I think one guy tried, you know, to, uh, to do something, and, uh, this guy, Jerry Kelly, who was, like, in for life, just shot him in the head, but the guy didn't die. And so, and then like that's a pussy gun, man. What and then they, do? then they got you know they got through to the to, to the the gate, whatever, and uh, they locked up those guys in there. And then they got to go past like you know the guard tower or whatever. A food truck arrives. They take all those guys hostage, right? Uh, yeah, There's mean, 35 guys, right? And they're in, now most of them are in pr- you know <laughs> prison work. guard uniforms. Yeah. Well, and uh, did any of them take food truck uniforms? Uh, no, but they tell the driver, they're like, you're part of this escape now. We're filling all this truck with men, and you're Whoa. driving us out of here. Give me that Capri Sun. And so they go they go <laughs> past the thing, and the guy... The guy this and, is a taste, man. And Jerry Kelly, all the guys are in the back. Jerry Kelly is on, lying on the floor, and he's already shot one guy in the head. <laughs> and um, the guy tells him, he goes, this is Jerry Kelly. <laughs> he goes, he's in here for life. He will have no problem shooting you immediately if you do anything wrong. Mm. So just get these guys out of here. And um, Tough day for the that driver there. You know, there's a thing like, but anyway, so they get out. My mom was Irish, I swear. They get out, and um, you know, some of them were caught in the ensuing days. Some of them were were to, like taken to safe houses. They get to South Armagh, which is like an IRA stronghold. They were taken to safe houses, and they they were like, you can get a job, like fuck off to the states and get a job, or you can go back to war. Yeah. And so, like, well, we'll, we'll uh, set we'll set up either for you. Yeah. So again, you know, it really was actual volunteers. You know, yeah. it's not like they were like, "Get the fuck back to work, shithead." Was any any of the thirty five like, you know, I, I I really like this food truck delivery. Thing. Yeah, you know, I had this moment. Can you give me a job at Cisco? And- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. In California. Just these ten minutes on this food truck were the yeah. best of my life. I, I associate Cisco with freedom. And yeah. s- some of the, some of them got back, you know, uh, to the states, and some of them went back to war. Some of them died later, like just doing bombs in London. Like you know, I mean, these are. F- these were hardcore guys who knew how to did it, and you know, <laughs> yeah, and yeah, they well, delivered. They're hanging, food. Out with, they're hanging out with Jerry Kelly, <laughs> and yeah, um, but uh, you know, some of these guys were shot overseas by the British Army, doing like you know, you know, shit in Gibraltar or whatever. Um, mm. But uh, I was hanging in Honduras. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, it's just that's the one that like I I read an account of it in, in in a book, and I can't remember, but it was just so it was just written in such a thrilling way that like. And, you know, the history of, of the IRA prison escapes. One time they had, like, the chief of staff. They just flew a helicopter over the yard yeah. and a ladder came down. And he just Fucking like of- a Batman TV show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, there's been a few different helicopter escapes from prison. It's, yeah. it's always very impressive because, you, first off, you have to know someone with the helicopter. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I don't well, know. You any, just call that guy from the, from the Black Widow movie and he'll just. Yeah. Oh, uh, really? Just sneak one in in his mm. pocket. <laughs> um. Saran wrap it in his yeah. But two, oh, of the, two, two, yeah. of, two of those guys were never found anywhere at all. Like, the guys went to America, like, the peace process happened. There was an amnesty, like, okay, yeah. do whatever you want. But there was two guys that were just straight up never found. Yeah. You know, like, when these things happen, mm. you're usually, like, caught within hours, right. you know? So the guy I want to talk about is this guy Dodger suggested that um, he's kind of uh, what you would call ODC, ordinary decent criminal. Just your everyday... Run of the mill. Look, yeah. you know, I just found myself in this position, and I made Your the most Honor, of it. I'm a simple, ordinary <laughs> criminal. <laughs> I'm a murderer. Um, this guy, uh, unfortunately, is a murderer. Um, well, but he does seem to be perfect. <laughs> Aaron always, yeah. Well, that, what, what? What about murder? Are you defending? Nobody's perfect. Yeah, nobody's perfect. Um, yeah, you know, some people jaywalk. I'm not and, saying he's not a murderer. I don't even know who it is. I'm just saying. Um, oh, well, O.J. Simpson. Um, not a Jew. <laughs> OJ, <laughs> yeah, I know it's a Hanukkah song. It's the Hanukkah song. It's so good. OJ Simpson, not a Jew. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so. And I think he was doing it like next to Norm when he first did. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Weekend update. Yeah. So anyway, and uh, in 1987, uh, in a, a town called uh, Minot, uh, North Dakota, uh, this guy. I wonder uh, how that guy's name. Was a uh, mine it? Yeah, it looks like Mino, uh, like in front. Oh, oh yeah, if it was Min- okay, got it. M I N O T. I guarantee in North Dakota they call it mine it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
I'm in my nut. Yeah, they call it Cairo, Cairo in Illinois. So there's no doubt. That yeah, they yeah. In, in Kentucky they call it Versailles Street. Nice. Uh, yeah, which is that's really, real nice. really just. You're diving. gonna take Versailles <laughs> for about a mile, <laughs> and you're gonna go to this restaurant <laughs> called Burgoyce. <laughs> Less Burgoyce is who you're looking for. Yeah. Ask for a banana. It's <laughs> gonna smell like shit <laughs> and come. Hey, listen. He's not his brother, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what he says. When he first meet him, he'll say he was. And they're only half-brothers, and that's <laughs> cool down here. Now, you see, they got d- different fathers. Mm-hmm. And he's actually younger or older uh-huh. because of Ramadan. I don't know why I said that was my birthday. <laughs> what did I say? <laughs> So uh, there's this guy, um, a sergeant in the local Air Force base, and he, he's burdened with a lot of debt, and he, he goes... Um, to uh, uh, rob it, I, I don't know how much money would be here. Uh, or maybe maybe uh, a nearby grain storage facility. Um, <laughs> to rob he to rob money from the grain storage. Maybe he's got a lot of birds. <laughs> you ever fuck with birds, Joe? Maybe it was all part of an elaborate plan to use birds to carry him out. Yeah, <laughs> or, or 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 he distracted the guy, and then the birds yeah. took the grain. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Come, my bird friends. <laughs> Um, so he, he goes there and he, he's, um, you know, he's got a gun and then there's suddenly two workers there and he shoots at them. He shoots this one guy, uh, four times, uh, he survives, but, uh, Jesus a tru- a tru- Christ, <laughs> a truck driver, uh, Jerry Thies, uh, was murdered and, um, he fled the scene, but somehow, you know, they figured something out, uh, you know, and called him in for questioning. I guess, you know, maybe this shot up other guy that survived, you know, you seem like a guy uh, who shot somebody a bunch. I mean, there's you know probably not too many people in mine it, you know. Right, right. right. Uh, who, who've been obsessed with grain silos. Yeah, I got some big money in grain <laughs> oh, now. I'm telling you, fucking <laughs> seed is going up. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, it's he, lightweight and he, sells by the pound. He just bread, com- he just com- he just money. he comes in and just brings the gun. Just surrenders himself. Oh, okay. I, I feel, so I think he was really, really bummed out. Uh, About which part? The murder. Oh, okay. Uh, you know, uh, he couldn't let a trail of grain right behind him. <laughs> that might have been... <laughs> well, I mean, when you're at the grain cellar, you think everything you shoot, grain's going to fall out, and suddenly a man dies. <laughs> Put grain in your wounds! It'll stop the bleeding! <laughs> this shit does everything! <laughs> I'm telling you, man. I wish I could have shot you with some grain. <laughs> you're going to make a poultice! <laughs> you're going to want to mill it? Fine! <laughs> It's only um, going to take about a minute. <laughs> so he's convicted, and uh, he gets two life sentences. Mine it, Rice. Plus 30 years for the attempted robbery of grain. So he didn't even steal any... Um, I mean, you have to run with grain. That's, I mean, a whole fucking satchel of grain. So... A, bu- a bushel or a, <laughs> a, 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 a bushel. whatever. But then when he's in, when he's in, in police custody, um, they've, he's in the police, uh, the police station, and he, they've got him handcuffed to a chair. And he's in North Dakota, eh? Yeah. Which is basically Canada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's why they get these French ass names for their towns. Yeah, and the chairs there are just comfortable. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> How would you rate the films one out of ten? Um, well, there's a lady uh, with uh, looks so like the, there's um, there's th- like three detectives around, and he takes out the lip balm out of his pocket and loosens it ar- like around his fucking wrists. Oh, and then pulls the handcuffs off, and he escapes the police station. And he's on the run around town That's for any three... word on what it was, uh, Blistex or yeah. no, no, Chapstick. Yeah, it was one of the ones we have to squeeze. Yeah, was it the or, liquid kind or, or was it the, yeah. the bomb? Yeah. It was the industrial uh, uh, prison escape Carme- lip bomb. Dude, I bet it was Carmex. Was it the one with the cow on it? Is that Did Carmex? You... No, no, that's utter butter. That's utter uh, bag <laughs> oh, butter God. bomb. Oh, damn it. Utter bomb. Bag, bag, <laughs> yeah, bag yeah, bomb. Yeah, bag bomb. I think that's Bag it. bomb. Yeah. Bag bomb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It has, right. it's, a, it's this metal tin with a cow on it. And yeah. it's Jesus just, Christ. For the udders. Yeah, and he just had it in his pocket. He slips it out of his I bet it was Carmex. It's probably Carmex. It's got can. Camphor. Camphor. No, that's camphophonique. Man, I'll remember all those lip balms? Yeah. <laughs> yeah they, oh, what a hot time. Well, what if was. it was a Breva? <laughs> <laughs> what if? Yeah. What if, what if tonight was? Marvel, Marvel <laughs> 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 in a, catch it on Disney Plus, the Disney animated uh, multiverse series, what if? <laughs> um, so, he, yeah, he's running around town for three hours. Lips uh, fully plumped, <laughs> hydrated, yeah, protected from the elements. Uh, yeah, slippery fellow. 
so he eventually he makes a, a move where he runs uh, three up three flights of stairs. Okay, and, well, and we've all done that. He's on, yeah, what, when you're running away, you, go can't, go, up. you can't go <laughs> up. That's a bad, you got to go down at some they, point. They map that out in Scream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, he hadn't seen Scream yet. He hadn't yet. seen Scream yet. It's 87, you're yeah. right. Um, but so then he goes to the top of the building, and, he, and they're just surrounded by cops, and then he makes a jump for a fucking tree, and ah. uh, the branch breaks. How tall was his building? Um, three stories. Three stories, okay. Mm, yeah. okay so. And uh, so he, he fucks up his back, collapsing to the ground. Oh, his back. And, and then he's in the hospital. Is and it he, spinal? He said to... Uh, <laughs> say, it, was, it was spinal. I broke my back. <laughs> Officer, I broke my back. <laughs> it's all right. My lip balm <laughs> broke <Okay>. my fall. <laughs> um... So he probably yeah. couldn't get a good grip on the branch yeah, because his, his hands balls. were all lubed up. <laughs> yeah, it's true. You know, man, what a catch twenty two. Oh no, it wasn't helps a you catch. get out, helps you get out of cuffs, but puts you right back in the prison. <laughs> no, no, the IRA they escaped with a snatch twenty two. <laughs> Those are gun parts. Hey, why, why does your gun smell so good? <laughs> snatch twenty two, baby. Snatch twenty two. Caliber. These were smuggled in by women crazy enough to date IRA guys. <laughs> 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 Smells great. <laughs> I mean, these are really wild ladies, man. <laughs> I mean, I'm a murderer, bro. I'm, I'm in here for thirty years. I'm straight up men. <laughs> I got problems, bro. You got problems. <laughs> so he's, he's in a cell in the Ward County Jail in February 88, and they find that he's been doing the Shawshank deal, chiseling away at the box. Oh, hmm. no, they look under his poster? Yeah, they looked under uh, yeah, well, something, but um, but yeah. <laughs> his uh, poster of a mining bunch equipment. Of the, a bunch of the box are, are fucking gone, and... Um, yeah, he's caught in the act. So uh, then he's in there for like four more fucking years, man. And um, he uh, he's in a state prison in Bismarck, North Dakota in October 1992. And oh, that's a hot time to be with, in Bismarck. With two other prisoners, uh, they escaped through a ventilation duct. And I think that was how Bundy got out of the, 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 the second jail the, one. Yeah, I think, um, I, I think it was a courthouse. Courthouse he jumped one, out a window. Courthouse he jumped out a window for yeah, sure. But he got uh, the ventilation duct. But the, out of yeah. and that's why the courthouses no longer have windows mm-hmm. that a human. And can now fit we out. don't have AC. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> you see what happens? <laughs> you see what happens? <laughs> we don't have AC. We got OJ. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, he had AC. <laughs> so so yeah, they get they get out uh, through the ventilation system, and the, the 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 first the first other guy is found in hours. The next guy is found in days. Um, our buddy, 10 months on the run, right? And, um, do you know how the other guys were found? One guy was just walking near. The other guy was I don't driving. Know. Trail of grain. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hansel and Gretel his ass. <laughs> so he would, um, he would dye his hair blonde and, um, and he would grow a beard and have long hair and, uh, he would steal cars to survive. I'm sorry, what? Yes. They would sell them, I'm guessing. So he'd, also- nah, he'd eat them like Terrere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. He, bit he, by bit. Yeah. <laughs> he would... Uh, he'd illegally hunt on the street. So he, so 10 months later, uh, he, he's found in Grand Island, Nebraska, August 1993. New car. Jesus. And, um, From North Dakota to Alaska, to Nebraska? Nebraska, yeah. That's fucking... That's not bad. In, sto- mean, in stolen cars, mind you. But it, also 10 months. Hey, man. It's a big country. So... Um, <laughs> So they, they sent him to, to federal prison, and uh, they labeled him as a problem inmate. Uh, I checked. No, uh, is, is this federal fuck you in the ass prison? Uh, yeah, federal prison. And um, <laughs> so, he, you know, he's... Um, so stupid. He, you know, he's, he's got fucking, like... Spoons. You know, I, I think... Uh, Rock hammer... No chapstick for this <laughs> one! 1992, right, was the last one, so... So then he's 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 got a, a new um, a, his next tape is two thousand six. So he's in jail in what did you say ninety ninety three? So it's, yeah, uh, what is that? Thirteen years later. Mm-hmm. And he, this is in two thousand six, Nebraska. In or, or, uh, or did, he's actually taking? in uh, uh, Pollock, Louisiana. Pollock. Yeah, uh, Louisiana. <laughs> So uh, those jails are no joke. I think dude, I think Louisiana's got a big prison population. Yes, yeah. Louisiana, yeah, like the biggest yes. in the country. I think. Yeah. It's a, it's not good. It's an industry. Yeah. Yes. Um, if you want a, a pine coffin or a license plate, you can get in Louisiana. So they've got him. They've got him in, in the, the fa- show me state. He's working in the factory room. You know, <laughs> <That's Missouri. laughs> 
He's been, um, you know, he, he and he's he's repairing used mailbags. Um, and um, Jesus Christ, what for for ten cents an hour? The USPS is like, man, these uh, yeah. mailbags so are all bag ripped bomb. up. Yeah, he's got the bag. Bomb. So on, uh, you know, on uh, the fifth of April, two thousand six, nine forty-five a.m., hidden underneath piles of repaired mailbags on a pallet <laughs> destined for, piles of destined for the outside, he lay hidden inside a specially built tube with a breathing straw pushed through the hole. And it was short, shrink wrapped and forklifted outside of the prison walls to a near a, to- a warehouse nearby, and he cut his way out of the package at 11 a.m. So he mailed himself basically to he used the mail. Yeah. yeah. Well, he learned a lot from all these bags. And um, and he walked out of the warehouse. And oh, sorry, I think that's Dave. He falls asleep all the time here. They're just and so he had uh, he had uh, escaped from U.S. Penitentiary Pollock. And it was the first escape from a federal prison in 15 years. Wow. Um, Do you know the other one? I don't know the other one. And no one does. Uh, I, I will find That's that out, That's how though. good it was. Yeah. So his name is Richard Lee McNair. Okay. And he had timed the escape knowing that 4 p.m. would be the time that anyone realized he'd been gone. And so he set off jogging towards Alexandria. Uh, and he was going to steal a car and everything else he needed, where to go. And he's jo- he's jogging down the railroad tracks, and there's a cop car out of sight. And, out of sight. <laughs> and um, <laughs> uh, uh, you know, a few hours go by, uh, and this guy, this cop, uh, Coral Bordelon, was parked, um, and he. Uh, so they. Do, this is after four p.m. Uh, he said after a couple hours. Uh, maybe they twigged earlier, but so so they had an APB or whatever. They had something so, out. Okay, check out the possible escape. And um. And this guy's jogging. So, yeah, this guy's jogging on the railroad thing, and he's, you know, he's got no wow. ID on him. This guy's him. like Rocky. Was he wearing, like, his prison blues or whatever? No, I think he's got, like, you know, the under well, wife beater type thing. And, he, and, and, and a bunch of mail bags. He's got no ID. Was he a white guy? And he says he was staying in a, in a hotel. Was McNair a white guy? Yes. White man. Then they should. They probably wouldn't have stopped him. Just a guy yeah, jogging down the railroad track. Yeah. Yeah. And he, said, he said, he was, Louisiana. said he was doing, like, roofing work in the area. Um... No idea. I think even saying that it had to do with like Katrina relief or something like that. Uh huh. And um, you know the the dash cam is going the whole time. And but he, the cop did the, stop him. The cop stopped him, and he was like, he was relaxed and chill the whole time, and like just and and eventually he lets him go. But he stopped for like ten minutes. The whole video is on Holy YouTube. Holy shit! I don't know if you want to play some of it, but I can. Is it worth? Is it hot? Well, I mean, just just check this out and imagine you're an escape. Yeah, 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 yeah. Take some notes, Matt. <laughs> Come on. Is he in a, you, you live around here, bud? No. Where do you live at? Down the road by uh, Pineville. Pineville? Uh-huh. Okay. Do you have any form identification on you? No, man. What's your name? It's Jimmy Robert Carter. Robert Jones. Robert Jones. Robert Jones. Uh, From the man. university? No, that's not the problem right now. Where are you, what's your address? I don't have an address. I'm at the hotel. We're working on uh, houses and stuff. I guess roofing. Roofing? Yep. Okay. For my brother. All right. Oh, another fake brother. Oh, um, what is? We got an escaping. Oh shit. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Where from? Uh, a prison. <laughs> my my prison? mind. Yeah. Huh. There's a prison here. <laughs> Been in it 13 years. <laughs> no, you don't say. Oh, it's hot now. You got any, you got any you? Oh, my hands are so balmy. Do you mind if I finish my jog now? <laughs> um, my BPM's dropping. I got to keep up my metabolism. <laughs> my brother's really ripped. I got to match him. Can you find out? I'm out with a white male on the tracks at uh, Gilly Williams. You can call my little brother. Call my little brother? He'll come again. He's got this Ramadan name or whatever, but... Uh. <laughs> Ramadan name? He's from North Dakota. <laughs> Where about? Take your glove off. Yeah. You bet. <laughs> yeah. Will you turn it? Can I see it? Like, make it a little bigger? Oh. Yeah, I got this one when I was in. Pr- I mean, when I, I was. I just uh, got, <laughs> <laughs> you ever see the X Files, man? <laughs> <laughs> you, you like you like sculptures? <laughs> I just got these prison tats. <laughs> Not from prison. Wow. 
He said he was born in 56. And he's just, I mean... He said he's born in 56. You think he, he's like... Uh, taking his pulse, like man, we're jogging in place to keep up his metabolism. I always run on the, I always run on the tracks. You got to be uh, trained. I'm getting cold here, officer. You mind if I, I'm training for a, a 10k? <laughs> I'm a roofer. Did I say that? <laughs> <laughs> Not a Thatcher. I mean, <laughs> different. <laughs> well, he's just like wants to let him go. I mean, he's doing his job calling in. <laughs> but he could just, he did, could describe what he looks like to them. Do right. Hey, man, show me your dick. Uh, we, got a, we got a picture of your dick on file. Can I play with your gun, sir? <laughs> <laughs> sure, I can. <laughs> Get on the ground. Squeal like a pig. <laughs> You're not a gun, man. You're a roofer. That's fine. Uh, I'm the yeah. captain now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the guy, the cop, what, I can't okay. prove that he's a guy, right? Did you go through a briar patch or something? A briar patch? I always roof in shorts and cut my uh, scratching up on. You know, I, mean, I roof, roof in shorts? That's that's a tell right there. You don't you roof pads. in shorts. Huh? Y'all wear pads. They're too hot. They rub your, the pads rub your back of your legs. Nope. The pads uh, rub? I mean, he's a good bullshitter. Where are you from? Huh? Where originally? Dallas, Texas. I mean, that's where you, y'all yeah, stay at, out, of. out of Dallas, Texas. So what's your name again? Jimmy Jones. He just said Robert Jones. That's right. Mm -hmm. Doesn't catch it. The cop doesn't catch the it. The cop doesn't catch it. They made this guy the assistant chief of police. I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe what them guys do. I'm not joking. Whoever's whoever's working underneath him. Oh, oh boy. Oh yeah, they're never letting him forget this shit. <laughs> Jimmy Jones. <laughs> Run it, I said, well. From I the sandwiches? Uh -huh. <laughs> I almost sandwiches. got you to spit up. That was nice. From the sandwiches. Jim, they made him the assistant chief. I'm not joking. <laughs> what a, whatever you say, chief. <laughs> yeah. No, that wasn't me. That was Robert. Uh, I got my name tattooed on my arm, I believe. You're late again. No, that was Jimmy. <laughs> we have different fathers. I'm at fault. No, no, I'm talking about you don't know where you're at as far as where, how far away you are from Hamel. Well, I would say it's eight miles. Um, I'm trying to think where you're going to hit out at. Uh, this man doesn't know a goddamn thing about this area, but... <laughs> Let's get you on a freight train, son. <laughs> I got a roof at home. You like movies about gladiators? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you. Like I say. <laughs> the Russell Crowe one? What are you talking about? I've, I've been busy for 13 years. Uh, <laughs> who's Russell Crowe? Let's tell them where to go. Right. 165 that goes south, and we're about two blocks. Two blocks. <laughs> Oh. You know, this book uh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. alias is Robert Jones, a.k.a. Jimmy Jones, uh, a.k.a. R. Bala, a.k.a. a.k.a. Sam Man <laughs> Sandwich guy, a.k.a. Hey. Yeah. Sam Speed. Hey, APB on a Sam Speed. <laughs> <laughs> we tried to get into the camper place, but we didn't get into the camper place yet. There's a camper place between, I think, Ball, I mean, not Ball, uh, Pineville, and what's the next town? Look, man, I just broke out of prison. I didn't have time to look at a lot of maps. He's saying shit, you know, like. Mm -hmm. I think that's Tioga. There's a little, uh, uh, you drive down the, the road. Dude, down this is nuts. This is nuts. It's crazy, bro. Like, and the thing is, like. So let's him go. Hey, no, I'm just doing my job, man. I know you are. But, um. Uh, I'm just doing my job. Yeah, just. Yo. Because the cop is not doing black? his job. Again, okay. Oh, yeah. Don. Yeah, yeah. Don. absolutely. Be alarmed by it. Absolutely. Just, him, he's he's, he's telling him not to be alar alarmed by the escapee. Yeah. I'm just doing my job, man. Hey, wait, that, if you see that escapee, he's not a bad guy. He might. He's one of us. Don't oh, worry, he's white. <laughs> Did he say that? No. Oh. Wouldn't be surprised. No, I know. Yeah. But, um. Anyways, bro, you know, hope that 10K works out for you. We're all pulling for you. <laughs> Anyway, I'm gonna get you to roof my house, <laughs> roof my wife. <laughs> but like, <laughs> but <laughs> the condoms are just there. <laughs> She's a Thatcher. You on a roof? <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> if there's thatch on the roof, it's fit for a tenant thing. Jesus Christ. In for a penny, in for a pound, eh? <laughs> but uh, um, yeah. So you know. It's it's just it's a re it's a real fun time, That's, man. So oh, they man. let him go. You, 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 so 
Well, I have a lot of questions, but I, let's finish the story. No, no, before no, no. I, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, well, I, no, chronologically, I want to know what happened to that uh, cop. Um, Assistant sta- chief of yes. police. And he, yes. and he stayed that way until he died. Uh, like, Out of embarrassment? No, no, Murdered no. Murdered by one Jimmy Jones. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, so here's here's the thing, is that um, apparently the photo going around did not look like him. Uh, it was outda- it was outdated and kind of dark. Right. It's not eighteen years old, and so he he would have he would have had you know access to this, and it it was um he would have kn- he would have known the photo going around. Well, they probably could both throw it up on the police the, in the, on the computer in the car or something. Oh, I mean the, yeah, the cop yeah, would exactly, have yeah, not, not not Jimmy Jones, um, not Robert Jones, not well, he Arbala, used to he not... used to be that. Guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So yeah, um, he he didn't notice the wow, it, well because his lips were so so wet. <laughs> he did. He did not notice the two different names um, when you know he fucked that up. What the, you say w- name again? Which is pretty bad. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, that's pretty. Yeah. So uh, I get. Well, you don't get to be assistant uh, chief of police by like paint. Well, the, the details. The, the assistant chief. The assistant chief always maintained that the description of McNair that was in circulation did not look anything like McNair when he saw him. <laughs> Despite the mishap, he remained in the police force for the rest of his life, working his way up to assistant police chief. Oh, so he eventually still became a Vince, uh, assistant. He wasn't then. No, uh, he became it. No, years later, yeah. No, that's what I mean, years later. Yes. Not at the time. He wasn't at the time assistant police. No, no. A- no. After Which the- is amazing. Yeah, that's, what they, that's what's amazing. They yeah. promoted he him. He became. Yes. You failed your way right so far. to the top. <laughs> Everybody makes mistakes. <laughs> um, <laughs> you let a murderer go. So then, and then, you know, eight days later, he's, um, he's going around the country in stolen cars. Roofing. Um, and he gets on the list of the 15 most wanted criminals in the U.S., on the 13th of April, 2006. Wow. Um, so two weeks after that, he goes through Washington to Canada, uh, British Columbia. And um, 28th of April, the BC cops, uh, Mounties, uh, find a stolen car parked at the beach. And um, they, tell him to, the beach. they tell him to get out of, of the car. And um, he jumps out and runs away. And, oh, you can't run He's at the beach. He's been training his whole fucking and, life. And the, fucking, the cops can't He's- catch him. I thought they were mounted. No. Two two days later, one of the cops sees him on America's Most Wanted. <laughs> God damn it! So, hey, uh, it's their problem, eh? Yeah. We're in Canada. So, so then they find the the fingerprints and a digital camera with like you know a bunch of self pictures. He's trying to make fake IDs and stuff. Um, this and dick. he he rides a bike to Kelowna. Uh, in Canada, yeah, and, it's a classic road race. We follow a lot of people do it. It's, um, and I guess he really, yeah, he did like mountain biking and stuff. So that was kind of because okay. also like when you're on the run, like well, what, what are you really gonna you gotta do? Stay, you gotta stay in shape, uh, <laughs> yes. and, and you gotta stay in the wilderness. This right? is what we train for. But also, stealing a bike is not gonna get you in as much trouble as stealing a car. Bikes, yeah, <laughs> bikes. Uh, Aaron, will you do me a favor? Yeah, will you give me two bubbly babies. Come on. Please. I'm so invested in this story. I know, but I'm still going to tell you as you walk to the fridge and back. Oh, with my head. But yeah, yeah. You, can, you can hear me without headphones. It's, yeah. it's real life. Oh, and, uh, Aaron, I'll take one too. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> You're just closer, and you're wearing those shorts. We want to keep, <laughs> yeah, see, see keep you seeing you get up and down, <laughs> you fucking asshole. <laughs> These shorts he's wearing. Dude, this is crazy. I've never seen Aaron in shorts. What a before. move. What a move. Power move. He's been, yeah, he's been going to the gym a lot lately, folks, and he's really uh, excited. Well, it's good to do legs. You got to. He's, equal, he's, equal proportions he, are important. Is, we're probably going to be ready for the uh, for the the picture soon, Aaron. I think it's about time you finally deliver for the, for the Yukio on, Mishima on that years old promise. Yeah, man, you said it. Listen, man, it's a lot, it's, thank it, you. And, and you're showing it by fucking <laughs> wearing these shorts. I'll tell you. Wow. And I better have a tattoo that is suitable. A tattoo. A tattoo. Um, have it peeking out. So, you know, in, in the years uh, ensuing, he's, he's going back and forth between America and Canada, which is crazy why? in itself. Why? Uh, I don't know why I'm asking you. I, I think, I, well, because well, he's seeing himself on America's Most Wanted, mm-hmm. and that's like 12 to 13 times with updates. Because people would see America's Most Wanted and do, and they got like 50 calls from people being like, I saw that guy. On a huffy. Uh, I see, yeah, was, uh, excuse me, I saw, him, I saw him up in Vancouver. I think he was I saw on him, I saw him, saw him in uh, huh. Saskatoon. I saw him in, <laughs> yeah. This, this guy's is, everywhere. Yeah. yeah. He's Bigfoot. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So yeah, um, and what'd you say your name was again? Sasquatch. <laughs> <laughs> Robert Sasquatch. Jimmy Sasquatch. <laughs> um, I mean Bigfoot. <laughs> People call me Bigfoot. Shit. So yeah, I mean, like, but crossing the border and getting away with it is just crazy too. And all in stolen cars. Well, I guess so. Crazy. The, so the thing is, there, Bro, there is stay. Go get into the wilderness and stay there. Well, so the, that was kind of the, a big place. Well, that was kind of the plan. But that that border is larger than you know, we're like illegal immigration from the south. The border of Canada and the United States is. Oh, it's gigantic, it's but gigantic. what I mean, they're, they're really picky about who they let in. No, 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 but there's a lot of places where if you are there at the right time, there's no one mm, on really. the, checking the border. People are sleepy. You know, like even there's, there's, there's roads in Vermont. If you take it at the right time, there's no border guards. No way. Yes. Sick. Yeah. Which ones? <laughs> we'll talk. I will yeah, talk up totally. here. <laughs> I got a kilo fucking suitcase <laughs> up my ass, baby. Um, I got some gun parts. I got, a, <laughs> I, got, I got the trigger of a gun and a pound of. Pound of, pound Can of I be, honestly, I've got a turd and a condom <laughs> shoved way up there. I've got I, a turd and a condom. <laughs> <laughs> and it, 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 when Just you have wait. them separate, it's not a felony. <laughs> Once you cross the border, you can combine them, and it's a turd and a condom, and it's Fine. You do the math. <laughs> <laughs> Why? How did that come up again? Oh, because they were came shitting out. outside. We need to. No, no, no. What do you mean? I mean, originally turned into condo. I need to ask Colin. It, it was part of this. It was just near the story. It was, the words were involved how, how did in the story. Turned into condom. Come turned into condom. It's only a couple on, episodes old. I know. Yeah. Uh, oh, wait, 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 we were talking about that previously. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, no. Shitting in a condom. Oh, no. Yeah, it came up a lot. Oh, no. Tying a knot. Now we, whipping around your head. What, <laughs> twist no. around your head like a helicopter. We don't. We don't. Pee pee pop <laughs> Twist like a helicopter. <laughs> Take your shit out. Come Put on. it in a condom. <laughs> Twist it around your head like a helicopter. Come on and raise up. <laughs> <laughs> Take your shit out. <laughs> Get it in a condom. Twist it around your head like a helicopter. <laughs> I did, would not have expected you for Petey Pablo. Oh, dude, no. Fucking never got me hip to that song. <laughs> Petey Pop, motherfucker. <laughs> Southern hip hop, bro. Bro, Southern, Southern hip hop. Come on. Come on. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> as, you, as, you were saying, as you were saying. So uh, he planned to, to buy property in uh, Williston Lake. Oh, you got and, it, you got But there was that. only one road in and out. Oh, that's not. And good. so, for an escape guy, <laughs> that's not really what you want to hear. No. Okay. Um. And so, um, in 2007, he's uh, in Eastern Canada, uh, around uh, the the Laurentian Highlands of Quebec. Quebec. Um, mountain biking, traveling around. Uh, through- oh, those French Canadians won't trust that. Remember when uh when that guy came out of the woods and there was like that 14 year old being like, "Fuck you." No, fuck you. I don't know what you're talking Oh, in the, the uh, Nature Man episode. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, so he, he finally he goes to Nova Scotia, New Brunswick, ends up in New Brunswick, and then the cops come across him. And Was he playing pool in New Brunswick? Well, I'm sorry, that's just an inside joke just for me. From- Great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. in retrospect, I didn't know it would only be for me, but I realize now New Brunswick makes, makes pool equipment. Oh. Billiard equipment. Oh, sneaker, <laughs> sneaker, sneaker, <laughs> billiards, <laughs> not pool. So the thing here's what's going down. At some point, um, he worked in a a, a, a car dealership. Oh Jesus Christ! And so, this guy steals them. So he would know where like the money was kept, and he would just go into car dealerships and like identify cars that like would be like a a, a white car that uh, is like you know as common as a Camry. Right. And then he knows where the keys are kept in those kinds right. of places. He knows where the cash is kept. Right. So cash and keys, and then knowing which cars don't have a GPS. Right. So he's specifically avoiding yeah. the GPSs. Yeah. And so he's just casually walking into these places with the calm, S- cool... Stealing a, 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 taking d- a, a beige 2000 Impala. And a bunch of cash. Right. Yeah. And so that's how he's living. And everybody's like, he looks like a man who was photographed in 1992. Uh, so, but uh, uh, he's known to take his shirt off and twist it around his head like a <laughs> helicopter. <Yeah. laughs> he's filling up his diaper with ropes and jizz. Um, uh, but his hygiene's laxatives. <laughs> he uses laxatives. <laughs> that's, so stupid. that's an inside joke, and that's stupid. No, too. that's in the show. 
<laughs> it's, it's a while ago, but it's in the show. <laughs> Her hygiene's lax in it. Um, but, um, so, yeah, uh, that, you know, that's how he's getting by. And, um, he, he would, he had a bunch of like, uh, a bunch of computers, a bunch of laptops. So no stole, stolen, I imagine. But it, it is weird. Uh, it seems like he, at some point, he could have held down a, I guess, well, that why would he be in that situation if he could have held down a regular job at some point? Oh, and, well, no, uh, the, the ingenuity shows that, yeah. But yeah. um, but if you're on America Most, Most Wanted all the time. I um, get, yeah, if, if someone you're working with, maybe they see it, maybe their wife sees it, maybe they yeah. invite you to a party. Yeah, you, can, you, can, yeah. you can only change your appearance so much, right? But this is also after the time when anybody was watching that show. Uh, 2006, nobody's Andy's watching. in Canada. Well, again, this no, is a guy who The Mounties saw it in Canada. Yeah. Oh, the guys right. spit, well, they, I mean, they're backwards. People. Yeah, guys spit out his moose or whatever. He spit out his poutine. Spit out his moose. Right into yeah. a condom. He spit out his poutine. Yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> spun around, Sid. So, um, yeah, he would, he, you know, if he was featured, he would kind of stock up on food and gas and then just, like, fucking chill out. Mm. Um, Do you think he was just watching the chat? He was just. He like, was. He had, he he was watching a website on one of his laptops that was just devoted to his. Wow. You know, being like being he had a Google News alert. Yeah. yeah. And 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 um, you know, then the other Robert one, anytime Jones. Jimmy Jones, <laughs> Robert Jones, <laughs> any anytime up. you know uh, there was an update, then he would have Bing. it. Um and uh, yeah, he followed his own case very closely. Uh, so fuck. Um, at, at some point, this he is gets, why you root for these guys. At some point. <laughs> You roofie them? <laughs> this is why no. No, why, roof them. Either this roofers. Why you, this no, is this why, why you root for them. Hire oh. them to roof. Yes. Uh, and um, you know, uh, so then he makes this mistake, uh, which was a bad DIY job of tinting windows in a van. Um, he was gonna get a van, or, or excuse me, a camper. But one of the false sightings of him that made it to TV said that I saw him in a camper, but he never had a camper. So he's like, Well, I can't get a camper now. Because so I gotta they, get a van. So I gotta get a van. So mm-hmm. he gets a van, but he does like a like a kind of like a shoddy tinting job on the back windows. Oh no! And so yeah, some some uh, you know young constable sees that. Um, yeah, it's not the the tint's two shades too dark. Oh and, and, uh, sure, I'm sorry. And and this is, I don't know if and, you, I think I, you botched this and, one and, in there. And, and, and this is this is a cop on the job six weeks. Ugh. Oh, I, you know I I'm new. You know I don't I remember all the details. Just the, doing my job here. Yeah. They're not gonna promote me if I fuck this up. You know. I'm not going to become assistant chief of no, police or anything. No, not if I fuck this not up. If I, so maybe yeah. if I fuck it up royally, then yeah. <laughs> yeah oh, I'm in the royal. So yeah, yeah he, um, he there was a little chase, and then they caught him. And um, was he getting pulled over for a bad tint job? He, j- I think there was some kind of alert that he might be in the area, so they were kind of on on high alert. And he just saw something about this van, and was just like, yeah. "Nah, man, like something's up with that." Well, like, well, so, instinct. So what's up with that? So uh, well, maybe the the cop said bad tint job. Ju- a tint job and decided to pull it over and he ran from from that. Well, that's the thing too is just like you know bad tint job just reeks of crime anyway. So it's like if you're gonna do tint, <laughs> dude, like you better do a good fucking excuse, job. Excuse me, Tight. sir, sir. I spend the money. I wanted to tell you that uh, you got robbed on this tint job and oh my god, <laughs> you're Robert Jimmy Jones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Christ. I got fucking I got hot. America's most wanted fugitive, Robert Jimmy Jones here. Oh. Imagine Jesus Christ, me six weeks on the job. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to tell you you got tip job, uh, tint job, baby. I wanted to send you a guy. And all, but <laughs> <laughs> if I let him go, I could have become chief of police <laughs> <laughs> so so um so yeah they catch him and um he's like dude it was just bad one of those days you know i just uh, <laughs> one of those he goes days. you know and he's like one um, of those days we get caught by the how police many, how, long, how, long, you how long from his escape in 2006 to this recapture oh that was Shit, let me see. Um, he he was gone for a while then. Well, Ramadan fucks all of that. The timing up could have been. What does fuck it up? Ramadan, you know. Did, it's oh, true. It's, yeah. yeah, it's like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what year it is right now because it's Ram- <laughs> the long Ramadan. <laughs> Great Batman comic. <comment. laughs> <Yeah. laughs> the food's delicious. There's no food. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In the fast, you got to fast in Ramadan, man. Fucking get wise, man. Get wise to uh, fucking Muslim culture, man. Duh, that would so that would be uh, October two thousand seven. So a year and a half. Yeah. Oh, that's not that long. What? 
I thought it was like... Think about a year in prison. <laughs> <laughs> Think about a year in mental prison. <laughs> or Canada. Uh, <laughs> no, I thought it was like four or five years at least. I don't know. So, you know... It's, long, it's still crazy. He's, it's, uh, is, he, he's had to steal cars all the way across Canada. He's like the Terry Fox. Dude, dude, dude of, of, um, just all these stolen cars alone. He canceled and Gretel his the way thing, with cars. Here, here's the thing, is that there's something about these stolen cars where you go like... Is it just they're not really being reported because the staff is like, that'll turn up. <laughs> I, I, I misplaced it. Well, that Robert Jones seemed like, <laughs> like oh, that know, Robert Jones seemed know, like a nice you know guy. Because you know, like, it's just like there's so many cars. And well, so, no, but he didn't so come. He didn't come back. So when he didn't show up for work and a car was missing, I think they could put those t- those two. No, together. no, no. He only no. worked at one dealership. Only, yeah, he would just, he just go, learn. He just move. He just knew the layout. Oh, and then he he would act like a guy that should be there. And then oh, and once gotcha. you know the layout of one, it's like an in and out. Yeah. When you know the layout of one, you know the layout of all, bro. You know where the fucking fry station is. Yeah. You know where the shitter is. Okay. So you know where the lockbox is. Lockbox. You know where they keep the spread. <laughs> The in, the, in the fridge. <laughs> so, the so, is where the so after goes. he arrived, the chilies. They lost all of these cars, and no one ever. No, he went to, he's, he he I, stole I, from multiple dealerships. Yes, this, this is. Oh, the, because he worked at one dealership. Yes, he the, then right. learned to steal from Hence multiple. Hence the dealers. In-N-Out franchise method. I get it now. Metaphor. But that's, that's not. That's not what the the understanding I had at the time. So oh. when he gets arrested, now you know. When he gets arrested, the cop, uh, the Mounties are like. Yeah, he was cool. He's cooperative. Joked around. Uh, not not um, a bad, not a bad guy. Later on, was in great shape. Mc, McNair would, oh. would characterize oh, them as good men during their jobs. Um, he uh, one they, they were like he he was even joking around with us. They they said, um, how much is the cap uh you know the capture reward for you? And uh. he and he goes um twenty five grand. And they're like, that's not much. And he goes, well everything's tied up in Bin Laden right now. <laughs> <laughs> He's right. He's That's right. hilarious. That's really good. Yeah, he's right. Yeah. Um, so then Aaron, he gets sent to ADX in the Rockies. No. Do you know what that is? I've heard of it, yes. It's Supermax, Supermax prison, prison. Yeah. Where just just for example. People 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 like they kill themselves when they get sent there. They didn't send no. Julian Assange there because they thought he would kill himself. Yeah. People will swallow razor blades when they go there. They oh they like three weeks in. Every, so it sounds like a, a really good place to house people. There, Aaron, you good? Yes. There's no COVID among prisoners in 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 ADX. Yeah, that's how. Because everything is just like you're on, like you just go through that now. Like it's just like mm. no interact, no, yeah. in, no ins and outs, dude. There's a, you if you even if you got a wristband, <laughs> no ins and outs. So uh, like, uh, and no in and outs. Either. There there is, um, uh, fucking the Boston bomber. The Olympic bomber, oh. El Chapo. Okay. Not Epstein. Uh, no. Uh, <laughs> the, uh, fucking, um, uh, who is the other? Uh, uh, Ogl- Terry, Ogl- uh, oh, yeah, not Terry Kaczynski. Nichols. Terry Nichols is dead. No, no, no. Kaczynski's also there. Yeah. Yeah, K- yes. Kaczynski and uh, not Nichols, but. Uh, Terry Nichols. No, not, that was the other one. Nichols is there, though. No, the, uh, the other one's dead. Oh, yeah, they killed him. Yeah. Terry Nichols and Kaczynski, I think, are pen pals in the same prison. I think they're like, wow. they like, and then the other one is, and uh, they do screen your mail. Yeah. So if there's anything like you know, say uh, for uh, for for chest uh, moves or something, or, or you know, escapes yeah. that doesn't make it to him. Um, yeah. There's there's like is is Sir Hint Sir Hint it, there? It's no, I don't think so. Uh, Sir Hint season. It's there's, there's a there are like that. That's the like the Suicide Squad jail. They call yeah. They call it the Alcatraz of the Rockies. Yeah. And. Um, so yeah, it's it's people are just too great a security risk, and he got there just by virtue of escaping. Yeah, and um, you know, uh, like during his his escape attempts, like like he well he starts the town he gets caught in New Brunswick. Uh, some journalist writes him, and he's like, "Hey, you know, thanks for putting our town on the map." And then he just starts writing him back, and this is the first uh retort to the press he's ever done. Uh-huh. And then the uh the guy starts writing it in the paper. And then they, they begin this correspondence, and he talks about all my time on the run, and this is how I did it, and stuff like that. And eventually, it became a book. Um, yeah, seriously. What's it called? Uh, I know why the caged bird sings. No, um, it was uh, so the author was uh, Byron Christopher. 
And, Go to Byron, Christopher. Um, I believe it was called um, "The Man Who Mailed Himself Out of Jail." <laughs> that's a good. That's a very good yeah. title. That's a very good title. Um, that Nicely came out in two thousand thirteen. You can call it the Mailman. Uh, <laughs> the Tribune. Don't call him Robert Jones. The Tribune uh, newspaper. Uh, it was. It was the series collection of it, and it, the series was run under the Running Man. Nice. Um, Wow, he really was the Terry Fox. Of so yeah, he he Canada. he would talk about, but you know, he would say, um, you know, like there were some like rumors like that I was gonna shoot it out with cops if I got caught, and he's like, but I just ran. He's like, you know, he's like after I killed that guy, he's like I renounced violence. Yeah. Um, he didn't want to kill him, or like he he felt bad immediately. He turned himself in. Yeah, yeah. He gave in the gun. Right, he, he right. Brought, he, brought, yeah, he brought yeah. the murder weapon. I told yeah. you nobody was perfect. Um. Yeah. Uh. But oh, um. Okay. Yeah. So. I told you. <laughs> I don't think that was in dispute. But the, here, here's the thing about about ADX. Um, What's the X stand for? He, uh, Strape! <laughs> he's, he's, he's held, he says, quote, the most secure section of the most secure prison in the world. And he says, um, you know, he doesn't want to talk about, I think, I think he's housed in like a 7 by 12 room. Um Ugh. And it's just—I mean, it, it's basically—it's basically torture. Yeah, but, you're, you're going to die there for but, sure. But, but we get to say, "Well, you're a dangerous person." Well, we and have, if if we weren't so incompetent there to is, let you escape a bunch, there is no doubt in my mind that he's working on something. I mean, always. I mean, I'm sure he is, but at the same time, it's just like what the, all of the when the you're entire there, you're prison. Not the no, entire no, prison. No, I, is, I would say probably not. It's the but, entire prison is just an indictment of how but, poorly we run it, it, other prisons but we here, have. We don't the, give a shit that thing, we lock is, up so it, many people. The pervert perseveres. You know what I mean? And so, but he also says about you know the the, the level of uh, what he considers, I I think, monsters there. Um, because don't forget, then you know, then there's just like. The Joker, the, the worst, uh, uh, you know, uh, cartel guys, for instance, um, Two Face. He he said uh, he he wrote to uh, Calendar Chris, Man. He Calendar wrote man. he wrote to Christopher. He goes, "Thank God for prisons." <laughs> he goes, "There are some very sick people in here. Animals you would never want living near your family or the public in general. I don't know how the correction staff deal with it. They get spit on, shit on, abused, and I have seen them risk their own lives and save a prisoner many times." He's a good dude. I mean, and the crazy thing is the gangs are not racial at ADX. It's purely based on spit and shit. They have, yeah. they have had no condoms. F- they either. have had uh, no. like Aryan Nation guys kill uh, warders in there. Oh god, um, wardens. Okay. Well, oh I, yeah, I, yeah. I, I take it back. Um, yeah, dude. Those places are not places that anybody there wants to be. Whether you work there. Or you're in there. Yeah. The yeah. local the local population. No, nobody wants that place to exist. Lo- yet it it perseveres. <laughs> <laughs> what is ADX except believe it or not? Nightmares persevering. Mm. The the lure of full time jobs actually caused uh, local residents to raise money for the prison to be built there. One hundred and sixty thousand oh, dollars. Oh God. I'm not joking. One hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars is what was raised by them to help them. Uh, well, I guess get. What did that get? A vending machine. It, 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 it got them it lo- a, a nightmare factory. Yeah. in their town. Yeah, it's 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 government money. It's a it's a it's a jobs program. Yes, uh, it's. But to win the contract, well, yeah. uh, come I on, think please. they were they were like, yeah. yeah, they made people beg for jobs. There's like, yeah, a, it's the, fucking the, the, disgusting. They, they, yes, made, they made an Olympic video. To please, be like, <laughs> please house demons is, in our city. This is the place. Please yeah. build a box. Please build the fucking ecto plasma. What's the thing in the, in the, the ecto containment? Yeah. Unit. Please yeah. build an ecto containment unit in our backyard, please, mm-hmm. for the sake of jobs. Because this one houses Kaczynski. He's a luddite. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, what a fucking nightmare. So they, so there's like. I'm guessing most of people, most of the people in there, are just mentally just. They, you you let them out, they maybe they would just do insane. I've always thought about this, like with like ADX or like where where they were keeping Manson and Corcoran or, or whatever. Like, it's it's um, it's like this uh, and it, weird, dark, genie in a bottle thing. Yeah, where like the power of this guy, whatever guy is in the box, mm-hmm. is so great that we have to build concrete and steel around him. But it is not that. It is the power of the embarrassment. Yeah. That's what it is. 
It's the power. Well, no, I'm not talking about this guy. I'm not no, talking no, about no. But I'm saying for all of them. I know for all of them. That's what I believe it is. It's it, it's not it's not like well, it's it, the perceived power. I'm not saying they that these people literally have power, but we have to keep them. Yeah. I mean, it's still power. You're worth you, no, you, no, no, no. It's still I, power. Agreed. But I'm saying that's what the actual like. The thing that yes, it's a threat. It's a the, threat. The threat of embarrassment is you let our worst boogeyman go because then heads will roll. Right. Um. And you know, like, with like that IRA prison escape, I was saying, like, somebody had to go after that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, but it, I, it is an ecto containment. Well, unit. well, so 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 compare that that idea with the fact that the guy who let him go was promoted. promoted. So we so it's kind of this like it's this dual idea of. We don't want our jobs to. Uh, uh, huh. We don't want to okay. have to deal what, with the fact that what? we fucked up. So we'll put them somewhere else. Yeah. Where we don't get in because trouble. Because Louisiana up. let a white man go. <laughs> yes. Because and of they that. have more people incarcerated than anywhere else. Be- yeah. Because guess what race most of them are. In the case of Bundy, in the case of how many of these guys, because people were like, ah, that's just some white guy who's just fucking his gay kid. Yeah, it's it, it's that. It's the good old boy system. Yeah. yeah. Because of this, that. Th- this cop six weeks on the job looks at a wacky tint job and goes like, I bet that's that fugitive. Right. And this guy goes, we just had a prison escape. There's a guy in a white Jogging beater running, boots. running yeah. down the tracks with no ID on him. Yeah. And, and has I'm given, given me two different names. In order to keep a system where that guy gets promoted, we have to also keep a system where there's a, there's a, a torture factory yeah. in, in Colorado. Yes. Yeah. That is that just, well, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a yin and yang. Yeah. And yeah. those are both good options. They should get, uh, uh, I'm looking up a book title just so I can recommend it. <laughs> they should get, uh, like, you know, the ADX, like, uh, gang on a plane. Oh, I mean, <laughs> that's Con Air. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, is, yeah, what would you call that? What uh, would you call Chapo that? has to work with Kaczynski, and like they got to put aside their differences. Well, yeah, they should do fucking yeah, Suicide yeah. Squad at ADX. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. dude, uh, the Boston bomber, the Olympic bomber, Kaczynski, like the gang is all here. Yeah, I'm and then this one it. guy that killed one dude in North Dakota and gave and himself just, up and just escaped a bunch. And, but, but it's too embarrassing. Yeah. he was on America's Most Wanted like 12, 13 times. Yeah. Yeah, we got a, a, a He's World Ameri- Trade Center bomber, uh, Ramsey Ramaz- 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 Youssef. That's right. Yeah. Uh, Terry Nichols, um, the Boston uh, Rolling Stone cover kid. Uh, Ted Kaczynski. Uh, Eric Rudolph was the uh, 96, Air, I believe, the Atlanta Correct. bomber. Uh, they are all, uh, they're presumably playing chess via mail. Uh, I mean, I mean, wouldn't it have been better if you just like separated these guys out in different places and then didn't have them interact with people? Oh, and Greg got back to me. Greg is the one that uh, suggested uh, the stuff from. Thanks, Greg. Um, the uh, the really new, appreciate the, the new cross uh, porn station. Good so luck. Thank you, Greg. Good thank luck, you, Greg. Um, and a good day to you, Greg. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna text him back right oh, now. Oh, dude. Also at at uh, 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 ADX is Robert Hansen. Who is the former FBI agent who was uh, spying for the Soviets? Ah, definitely wow. profile worthy. I've heard about him quite a bit. Also, there is He's a guy ADX. named Barry Mills who looks fucking cool as fuck. Huh. They, <laughs> they gave him shades. Yeah, yeah but fucking keep the Ray Bans on. <laughs> or is he blind? He might be blind. I don't know, bro. Uh, leader of Justices. the Aryan Brotherhood. <laughs> <laughs> In my case, therefore, so am I. <laughs> He's Aryan Brotherhood speaking like a cholo. Yeah, Nicodemus. <laughs> uh, man. The volleyball at that pretty place nice, must right? Be just pretty terrible. nice. Uh, definitely, um, not a lot of sports. No, there. None of this would have happened if he was not a member of the dominant cast in the country. <laughs> yeah, would have been locked up, key thrown away, and yeah. incinerated first time. Yes, but, <laughs> yeah, if, but if, uh, if only he had sold weed once but, in Alabama. But, but the abilities to escape and evade are admirable. Are uh, I mean, you root for the guy, right? Well, especially watching that video on the dash cam. And like you said, just the fact that once you become incarcerated, you are immediately an underdog. Yes. And listen, man, if fucking Ted Kaczynski escaped, I'd be like, yeah, man, fuck the man. Dude, seriously. Fuck, fuck the I, man. I, it, it sucks, but it's true. Yeah. You you're just like, there's something cool about it where you're like, 
the you're dominant like, structure has changed, and the, and the state is now the boogeyman. Yes. And so, fuck, dude, if you can get out, shit. The one, yeah. the one thing that, <laughs> yeah. yeah, is this monolith thing, you know, that, like, can crush you. And for good. Does, and does. Whose who's so, whose purpose to, is to, to, to one, yes. 1% of our population. There's just something where you're like, man, burn this fucking shit to the ground. Yeah. You know, like, and, and it's, it psychs you up. There's a, the collateral damage of prison in the United States is that substantial. It's not. It's not for rehabilitation. It's purely for Sadism. torturing people. Yes. Yeah, it's punitive. That have. Yeah, you know, we still have people arguing for the death penalty. Yes, and and, 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 it, it, and it, it's just this idea that they deserve. We the people yeah. who the people who say they deserve it are usually people who are like, well, it's God's justice, and it's like. You're not God. You don't get to say that they yeah, live or it's die. A, uh, it's a perfect That's punishment for the for a for crime, but we have an imperfect system. Yes, and and uh, also the God thing is very. I mean, you know, it's you know the uh, fucking um, the 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 line memorized from uh, Ballad of Reading Jail uh, by Oscar Wilde. This too I know, and why is it were if each would know the same? Every prison that man builds is built with bricks of shame. And bound with bars, lest Christ should see how men his brothers maim. Mm. <laughs> That's very so it's just going like very bars. Very yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Behind <His> bars. Bars. <laughs> bars of his own. <laughs> right. I'm uh, in here for gay shit. What are you in here for, <laughs> bitch? Guess what goes on behind closed doors here? <laughs> I don't have no women with pussy smuggling in guns for me, motherfuckers. Now give me that condom. <laughs> I, got a, I got a shit. <laughs> Either the wallpaper goes or I do. <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that was good. You like that shit? Fuck the police, except if you're a cop and you're a listener. Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> Blue Lives Matter. <laughs> Blue Lives Matter. Barely new lives matter. <laughs> Honestly, true lives matter. <laughs> <laughs> Good move. That's All nice. right. <laughs> right. Jimmy Curtis. Pump the, matters. She's got the top off. Uh, she's dancing. She's falling. Excellent. She's charming. Looking good, Billy Ray. <laughs> <laughs> Looking good. Looking strong, John. <laughs> Feeling good. Let's, let's go watch uh, what if. It, let's go watch what if. This, pad. this was nice. Let's go to the piss pad mm -hmm. for your pep, for all your puppy training needs. Are mm -hmm. oh, you sick of fans, freeloaders, <laughs> sicko fans, two faced friends, <laughs> sicko fans? I yeah, uh, Dodger. Thank you again. Uh, Great. Th one. Thank you to Greg uh, from Serious Adult. <laughs> Dodger. Uh, we oh, love boy. the listeners. Uh, we love you guys. It, you know, fucking. Sometimes you guys suggest some fucking dope ass shit. That was really good. Never true. heard of this before. Yeah, hit me with it. Like, I love it. Um, yeah. And um, send Aaron uh, drawings. Yeah, please send of me some fuck. Like, I need this. This tattoo's got to be fucking great. And uh, mm. uh, and I'll show you my body <laughs> with it. With shorts. Oh, dude, maybe maybe Naria Naria Daisy Duke. You're gonna you're gonna use Nair? Oh, that'd be nice. I mean, to be the yeah, sub Nair, Nair, Nair up for the yeah. Daisy Duke. Yeah. yeah, Steve McNair or whatever the Robert McNair. Robert, Robert McNair. McNair. You call me Robert McNair. I'm Robert, Robert Lee McNair. <laughs> no, I'm Bobby Jones. Uh, <laughs> Jimmy Jones. Jimmy Jones. What did I say? I, right now, uh, James <laughs> Dillenbeck. What did I say? Thank you, everybody. Who's uh, the all uh, fucking four of you? Uh, <laughs> Relax. Yeah, we're very impressed. I am very yeah. impressed, especially especially Dillenbeck. That was yeah. really nice. It's really uh, but I, I'm eager for other interpretations. Uh, if you've got Photoshop skills, even you know, yeah, you can't tattoo Photoshop, dude. Have you seen some of these fucking people? You don't want to get, you don't want to get that. Well, like you, a cool you, realism one, full no, back piece. You don't no? want that. <laughs> full no, you want, you, you want, you want a good drawing. Okay. In my yeah. in my yeah. opinion. Yeah. It's, yeah, a, I, it's I a good agree. opinion. That's right. But well, I'm you can break down the aesthetic distance. Break down the aesthetic distance. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean, it's high science. It's working with mercury is yeah. what I'm saying. Let's get and out of here. you're an artist. Folks, uh, uh, I love you always. Um, and I will sorry we haven't you. been, you know, like every week we've been really fucking busy with work and stuff. Uh, but we love you very much. I... I I'm always so psyched to hang out with you boys and talk about Absolutely. some fun Good. shit. And now we're going to go watch Captain Peggy Carter beat some nazi ass. And she pegs a guy. That's Peggy. how she got her name. <laughs> She's a Do I walk with a limp, champ? <laughs> <laughs> not, <laughs> not yet. Hey, you, know, you know what her peg is? It's a frozen it's condom full of shit. Oh! oh. oh. It's frozen. Matt.
I don't make the rules. It's a what if. <laughs> what if? <laughs> what if? Who's what if say? it was frozen? <laughs> what Who's to say? <laughs> All right, I'm going to say goodnight. I love you. My name is John Fahey. My name is Aaron Peter. Remember so? Good night, everybody. We love you. Yeah.